वर्णिवे शरमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराज पूजित सुरनरो तमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचित धर्मनंदन महम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइट ही वोट बिलउड कंस्याम महाराज पाथमिक कठोर लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाद गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डेट इज जय स्वामी नारायण इन द युवा सभा द वचनामृत सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ सारंगपुर डेवलपिंग अफेक्शन फॉर द फॉर्म ऑफ गॉड was being continued for discussion and in the beginning Sri Ji Maharaj himself on the Sravan Vodhi 6, 7th, 1877 Sri Ji Maharaj was sitting facing north on a large decorated coat which had been placed on the veranda outside the north facing rooms of Jiva Kachar's Darbar in Sarangpur. He was wearing a white case and hair tied a white pack around his head. He had also covered himself with a white blanket. At that time, an assembly of munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him. So in this way, while wearing a white case, Sri Ji Maharaj himself was sitting in front of the devotees and Santo in Jiva Khachar's Darbar in Sarangpur. So in the beginning, Sri Ji Maharaj himself said, Please begin a question answer session amongst yourselves. So, first question asked by Swami Prakasanand Swami By what means can a devotee of God develop intense affection for the form of God? So, that was the first question of this Vachanamrut. And the other Munis, the other Sadhus, they attempted to answer that question, but that was not uh, the precise answer, and that's why. Sri Ji Maharaj began to reply and Sri Ji Maharaj himself then said like affection uh, can be developed due to beauty, due to lust, due to avarice, due to some selfish motives or due to the other person's virtues. And Sri Ji Maharaj after explaining all these things, Maharaj himself said like affection developed due to beauty, due to lust, due to avarice, due to some selfish motives. These all four types of affection cannot be, uh, cannot remain for a long time. And only the affection developed due to uh, pursuing one's uh, virtues that that's remains ever last. So after that, Somla Khachar even asks Sri Ji Maharaj the second question of this Vachanamru. Somla Khachar asks Sri Ji Maharaj, uh, which virtues are these? Meaning external ones or internal ones? So as Sri Ji Maharaj said in the Vachanamru, like uh, effects and developed due to the other person's virtues, however, uh, ultimately survives. So Somla Khachar immediately asks him, like which type of these virtues? External? or internal. Internal meaning the virtues of saintliness or or we can say like uh, the external ones is like one can easily find, one can easily see the virtues from the other person's life. But these internal virtues are different from the external and those virtues are cannot be, are, cannot we cannot uh, see in other person's life easily. If we observe one's life for many days then and then we can find these internal virtues so to this Sri Ji Maharaj himself said like um, only the internal virtues are more useful to develop affection for Bhagwan. then Swai Prakasan and Swami said uh, we are, uh, then Sri Ji Maharaj himself asked you are asking only for the affection developed for the form of God in devotee's heart or you also ask the affection developed 
for the devotees to Bhagwan. Then Swam Prakasan and Swami said, we are asking about both. So Sri Jimara then uh, give explanation regarding this answer. And first he said, this can, uh, this can be meaning this kind of da uh, affection developed due to three factors. Once by words, second by body, meaning physically how one act, uh, reacts with the sadhus. Third one is, uh, first one is by words, meaning by speech. Second one is by physically act, uh, and third one is by mind. So in this way, when one uh, behave with the great sadhu and Bhagwan in such a way that one can develop affection for Bhagwan as well as Bhagwan also develop affection for the devotee. So in the beginning Sri Maharaj himself says like one should not hurt any living being with one's speech. Moreover, during a question answer session when principles are being debated with God and a senior sadhu then even then those who are junior should yield to the those who are seniors. And third point in this uh, in that uh, point of uh, how to behave with words, meaning how to behave with the speech, with the great sadhu. Third point is uh, whenever we cannot uh, we cannot understand or if we can uh, cannot feel appropriate or we cannot uh, cannot feel if we feel uh, inconveniency to follow Bhagwan's or great sadhu's agnya or command, then we should not deny immediately but afterward when times comes then we should explain with very humbleness with devotion and while folding hands meaning become very humble das na das and with the devotion with bhakti and also when we in this way when uh, we become humble and with the devotion and with great respect for the great sadhu when we explain to him like uh, you are saying this to me to follow this agnya but i have this doubt in following this or i cannot able to follow this agnya so in this way when we behave with speech to the great sadhu and Bhagwan, then our heart is also developing affection for Bhagwan as well as Bhagwan also become pleased upon us and because of that he had also affection remained for us. And today the third uh, second point Sri Jimara himself explained to us Swami Narayan Hare Swami Narayan Hare. Now uh, how should one behave physically? Well, if one's body seems to be hyperactive, one should weaken it by engaging in worshiping or by observing the chandra and vows. Then, on noticing this, if God or a senior sadhu takes care of one's body, it is well and good, but one should not knowingly take care of one's own body. Also, one should physically serve God and his duties. When God or the great sadhu, not as a person behaving in this manner physically. They develop affection for him and the devotee also develop affection for God. So in this point, Sri Ji Maharaj himself says, like one should behave physically in such a way that when one feels uh, one's body is feeling, uh, one's body is being like hyperactive, then immediately one should begin to uh, Sri Jimara shows two ways to uh, reduce one's hyperactiveness in one's body. Uh, one way is to weaken it by engaging in worship, meaning by, uh, by doing bhajan. And second point is observing the chandra and woes, meaning observing any kind of top. So, we can easily understand like by reducing our uh, our intact meaning reducing our food definitely our body become weak but how is it possible while sitting to doing bhajan 
how is it possible to reduce our body or reduce our hyperactiveness for this point Uh, for this point, it is uh, Pujanis Kam Swami explained like by sitting in one place and doing bhajan, one can get rid of laziness. So definitely, if one sit uh, for the bhajan and engage one's mind for remembering the form of Bhagwan or chanting his holy name or singing kirtan or doing any kind of uh, religious activity meaning doing bhajan, mara or whatever kind we perform bhajan so by doing that activity by doing that bhajan or by doing singing kirtan or uh, doing any kind of job or mara or anything we automatically came out of the laziness and which your devotee of God does bhajan continuously will not have hyperactiveness in him. Meaning, the attraction towards the world and the vices. So, what is hyperactiveness? Hyperactiveness meaning our intense force of our vrutis, our mind, to engage into the any kind of vices, any kind of five sen uh, sensual pleasures. So, when we sit for doing bhajan, then automatically our mind diverted from the vices towards Bhagwan, and that also reduces our hyperactiveness. And we know, like uh, while doing chandra and vows, or doing a fast, or performing uh, ekthana, meaning only eating once a day. So in this way, while doing any kind of tap any kind of uh, penance or austerity, we can also reduce our body or reduce our hyperactiveness. How? Suppose we have performed a fast for a day. Then we cannot have that much energy when we have uh, eat once or twice a day. So definitely we can easily find uh, like hyperactiveness is reduced because of performing tap. So in the same way, by doing bhajan or by sitting and in one place to perform any kind of devotion, that also reduces our hyperactiveness in our body. Because that also one kind of thought. Because we cannot uh, like to sit at one place for a certain period of time. And if we sit at one place for a certain period of time, then that is tough for us. Because our body, our mind, cannot accept to sit at one place for a certain period of time and still by force we are sitting our body at one place and because of that automatically our hyperactiveness is reduced there was an example of uh, Devji Bhagat of Nainpur once Gunadidanan Swami and Iskuranan Swami both arrived at Nainpur uh, and they stay at Devji Bhagat's home. So at that time that uh, th we know like there was no any transportation facilities so santos and devotees they, were, they have to walk from one place to another. So Gunaditanan Swami and Niskudan Swami they both walked for a great distance and because of that they both became tired and even then they both as Devji Bhagat if he wanted to listen to the Katha then Devji Bhagat said yes Swami I want to listen Kathas from you then both the Sadhguru did Katha for a long time and it was 1 a.m. in the morning so even at night time even though the uh, Santos they walked for the whole day still they were doing katha at night and that was 8 a.m. in the morning so after that both of the Sadgurus they asked to Devji Bhagat uh, now uh, you should go to sleep and because you have to do work in the farm in the morning so now you can go 
and uh, take a rest then Devji Bhagat said no Swami I do not want to take a rest right now because I have a voice to perform 200 maras every day so after finishing these kathas uh, I'll go to my farm then at farm I do some work and after that I perform my niyam of doing 200 maras and then if time remains and if I desire to sleep then I'll go to sleep otherwise I again take a shower and perform morning puja and do my routine meaning start my day so in this way when Devji Bhagat said this both Gunadita Swami and Nishkura Swami become pleased upon that devotee but how this can be happen meaning without sleeping at night even though Devji Bhagat was also become tired because of doing hard work in the farm and still he would uh, he, he he cannot sl uh, he could not sleep at night and doing bhajan how is it possible this is all because of his practice of doing bhajan meaning his body didn't desire to sleep his mind didn't desire to go to sleep why because he had one thing fixed in his mind like i have to perform 200 maras every day no doubt, Devji Bhagat had also, when he started this practice to doing 200 maras every day, so in the beginning, he might have some problem, meaning our body, uh, no one's body, like, uh, remain without sleeping or without eating. But, if we train it in such a way, then our body survive with little sleep and little food so that was the example narrated by Pujya Swami in the Yuva Sabha so second point Sri Maharaj says in the Vachnamrut like then on noticing this if God or a senior sadhu takes care of one's body it is well and good but one should not knowingly take care of one's own body meaning we should not care taking care any kind of care of our body if your body is feeling hyperactiveness, then we should do tap and doing bhajan. By doing these two things, Bhagwan and the great sadhu, like Pujya Guruji, will become pleased upon us. And because of that, our devotion increases for Bhagwan. And because of that, our affection for Bhagwan also increases. And Bhagwan will uh, Bhagwan will also become pleased upon us. And because of that, Bhagwan has affection for us <laughs> who's ever become superior in satsang or in other some uh, under some pratar because of bhajan because without doing bhajan without engaging oneself to perform devotion for bhagwan no one can attain greatness in spirituality and it is easy to do bhajan but one falls back when it comes to doing bhajan and when a senior sadhu sees someone doing bhajan they become happy you can do bhajan even while doing work or listening to kirtans while driving so this is easy way for us even we cannot perform too much uh, like vows like Chandrayan or Dharnaparna or any other like fasting for certain days we cannot perform that much because we know we have too much activities throughout the day like as a sadhu for me I have to do certain sevas for Bhagwan for Santos also I have to read some scriptures also read for something in this way as a sadhu for me it is uh, too much sevas and more things to do for a day not only that but as a devotee for you you have to do your job your business uh, your social and family duties so in this way you are also become very busy throughout the day and because of that you cannot perform the fast or any other woes easily 
not doubt we can perform vows like chandrayana or dharnapana for month or for four months but not more than that on the other hand we can do bhajan whatever time we desire even you while driving the car when you are begin your journey from your home to your office your job or your business then you may have distance for half an hour or an hour or even 15 20 minutes then while driving the car you can chant bhagwan's holy name swami narayan swami narayan on a counter or you can also listen kirtan or katha while driving that's also a kind of devotion that's also a kind of bhajan when we do these little things in our life for continuously for certain period of time then by knowing this great sadhus like puja guruji and the other great santo they would become pleased upon us and because of that because of his rajipo our heart our heart melted and our heart uh, developed affection for bhagwan that automatically system developed and created by bhagwan himself there is no any other way to direct attach in, into the form of bhagwan so we should do bhajan whatever time we find it for find for doing bhajan meaning uh, to uh, in this way if we con uh, consider this easiest way to do bhajan then we cannot uh, need to spare special time for doing bhajan even while doing any other activities we can do bhajan and this is easy easiest way for us because uh, it is very hard for us to do tap or dhyan meaning meditation or any other things but this is easy to do bhajan or kirtan or listening kathas or listening kirtans while doing other work not only that but just as we have a, a greed for gathering as much clothes or shoes or some have a greed for like buying a new car new branded car or in this way one has a greed for earned too much money in a life too much facilities and luxuries in a life so in the same way we should also create the same kind of greed to do more and more bhajan if i have performed uh, 100 maras today then how i'll increase 100 to 200 or 150 after a month or after a year if i have performed 40,000 job today then how I can increase it how I can double it within two months or four months or in a year just as one businessman always think for this thing like uh, this year I earned this much profit then how I can do it double so in the same way we should also increase our devotion and just as one uh, one businessman is plan is doing plan for increase his profit increase his business in the same way we should also make a plan how to increase our budget how to increase our devotion and if we perform this uh, if we uh, work on this way to increase our budget then automatically our uh, physical hyperactiveness reduced even we cannot find any kind of hyperactiveness in our body and because of that our attraction towards the pancha visas our attraction towards the anything other than bhagwan and santo and satsang automatically reduced so create greed of doing bhajan or increase our bhajan when one does a lot of bhajan all that so vows that one keeps will all go away that's natural like when we engage more and more in doing bhajan 
then automatically our bad habits meaning bad in nature automatically go away from our own self and if they doing job or singing kirtan or listening kirtan or katha or whatever kind of devotion we perform if we perform those any kind of devotion with understanding the glory and greatness of bhagwan with the remembrance of his divine form then that is the best devotion and such kind of devotion gives immediately peace in our heart and one should keep the habit of doing bhajan in a silent environment because there is no one to disturb who wants to make god happy so whenever we get time not only doing bhajan while doing any work but even spare a certain period of time begin from 5 minutes or from 10 minutes just see in a very calm environment and only remember the form of bhagwan not only that but even chanting his name in this way meaning uh, we are not alone but we are only we and bhagwan no one else such kind of chatting with bhagwan is more useful than any kind of other uh, any other kind of bhajan meaning this is a personal chatting with bhagwan so begin to spare 5 to 10 minutes in a day for chatting with bhagwan we definitely chat with other persons in a day for long period of time but if we spare 5 to 10 minutes chatting with bhagwan that will more beneficial for us the second important thing is serving god and his devotees as sri jima ras says like also one should physically serve god and his devotees so this is third point for uh, behaving with the body so because of this we can also get rajip of great sadhus like puja guru ji and the other santos and because of that our heart also develop generate a uh, devotion for bhagwan affection for bhagwan so whenever we get to do seva of a devotee we should do it immediately we can see this a lot in dada guruji once a devotee saw in the mandir uh this uh, incident happened in surat when puja dada guruji was staying there for 10 or 11 years and he was a mahant meaning the head of the mandir and instead of his uh, like higher position in the mandir instead of his the head of the mandir he remained very humble not only that but even he kept many poor devotees in uh, in a uh, quarters of mandir because they don't, uh, they didn't have any kind of food facility or accommodation facilities and because of that puja dada guru ji he kept all those poor devotees inside the mandir and he himself made a food for them why because he understood this is a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan the same bhagwan to whom i worship every day and this is, this person is the devotee of that god not only that but sometimes those poor devotees the they took a shower in in a mandir and uh sometimes they have very hurry to go to their job so sometimes they kept their wet clothes inside the restroom so puja dada guru ji himself washed the clothes and dried them so how kind of this seva is this possible for any other mahant or any other head of the mandir like that such kind of very humble seva one can do no but dada guru ji's mind is totally different from the others he is totally different from the others he has only mahima of bhagwan and his devotees and because of that he can perform such kind of seva so by this incident we can also learn that 
Whenever we get a chance to do seva of any other devotees, we should immediately perform that seva. The more and more one serves God and his devotees, God becomes extremely happy upon that person. We should never get tired of doing seva of God or devotees. This is our tradition to do seva. When we found in Muktanand Swami, Gopanand Swami, Nityanand Swami, Gunaditan Swami, any other Santos life, their life remained full of seva. Just as uh, Dada Guruji's incident will listen, like he performed seva for devotees, in the same way, Puja Guruji's life is also filled with the seva. In the beginning, he even uh, uh, he even cooked food for devotees, and for that, especially Dutpak and Malpura, he himself like uh, begin his uh, kitchen, meaning begin his cooking early in the morning from five o'clock, and he finished cooking the meal for uh, at uh, 12 or 1 in the afternoon. So this is what his seva. Because he understood the glory of devotees. Because he believed like this is the same devotee of the same Bhagwan to whom I worship every day. To whom I believe the Supreme Personality. So in this way, when we have the Mahima in our heart, then by performing seva if we physically engage our own body to serve Bhagwan and Sant then by watching over such kind of behavior our physical behavior Bhagwan and Santo will become pleased upon us and because of that we can easily develop affection for Bhagwan also Bhagwan have affection for us Gunaditanand Swami, we know about this incident like uh, while going towards Vartal, 19 saints become ill and they have to stay at one place. So Sriji Maharaj was there with the group. So Sriji Maharaj himself asked, who will stay with this Santo? Then Gunaditanand Swami himself said, I myself will stay here and serve this, all these ill Santos. Then Gunaditanand Swami served all these 19 Santos for several days and when those santos become uh, regain their health at least they they become uh, able to perform their own activities so after that they all 19 santos they requested to swami gunaditan and swami swami please now we are happy we are healthy so you should go to vartal for maharaj darshan so then and then, only because of their request, Gunadidhan and Swami go to the Vartal for Maharaj Darshan. And upon reaching there at Vartal, even Maharaj, when Swami was performing Danvat to Sriji Maharaj, then Maharaj himself embraced Swami for 19 times and one more time for the Rajipo. So this is what the way to attain Rajipo of Bhagwan and the great sadhus. And because of that, Rajipo, we can develop affection for the form of Bhagwan. So first is to physically serve God and his devotees. Second is to do God's bhajan. And third is to do tap. So if we train our body in these three ways, then by observing our behavior, Bhagwan and Santo will become pleased upon us. Once there was a sadhu named Sukhdatanand Swami and he arrived at Lunawala and there was a village in the Gujarat and became ill. So at that time, the Brahmin devotee, Lakha Joshi, he also lived there in the village. He used to bring food for Swami and serve him. Meaning this Brahmin devotee, Lakha Joshi, he had performed seva of Sukhdatanand Swami in his illness. So at the time, due to that seva, Swami become uh, Swami became extremely pleased on him and said, "You can ask for whatever you want." 
So this Lakha Joshi, he was also great devotee and he also earned Rajip of Swami and because of that his hyperactiveness meaning his attraction towards the vices and worldly desire reduced. Not only reduced but washed off. And because of that he asked not anything worldly but he has to uh, ask from Swami. Swami, if you uh, become extremely pleased upon me and if you really want to give me this, uh, anything what I ask, then please gi uh, grant me a please give me a boon that uh, whenever you go to Akshardham, then please take me with you to the Akshardham. Then Swami bless him with this boon and uh, when Sukhdata and Swami after some days he become healthy and after that after some months pass and in another village Swami fell ill and after that he himself went to the Aksar Dham. So when Lakha Joshi received this news that Swami went to Aksar Dham, so he also said to the other devotees now the next day I will also go to the Aksar Dham. Because Sukhdatan and Swami gave me a promise that he would come to me to take me up to them. The other devotees they thought like they only explained to Lakha Joshi, like Swami had told you to take uh, here, he'll come to take you to the Dam. But not this time. But when you, uh, when you are at, uh, when your time, meaning when your life is over, then. Swami would come to take you to Akshardham. But Lakha Joshi he had a faith in the words of Sukhdatan and Swami and so he said no. Swami would come the next day and I will go to Akshardham with Swami. So definitely according to these uh, words of Sukhdatan and Swami, the next day Lakha Joshi got a uh, uh, few uh, fewer and because of that without any long uh, fear or anything the next day he said uh, to, to the other devotees, now Swami is here, Maharaj is here and I am going to the Akshardham. So in this way, he passed away to Akshardham. So this is what happened because of his seva. So when we perform physically any kind of seva for Bhagwan and his devotees, second, when we engage ourselves in doing bhajan, third is to do tap, these all three things will give us tremendous Rajipa of Bhagwan and his great sadhu and because of that our heart develop affection for Bhagwan and the great sadhu. Not only that but even Bhagwan himself has affection for our own self. One who physically serves God and devotees, everyone becomes pleased upon that person until one is physically healthy. One should serve God and the devotees as much as possible. So in this way, uh, Sri Jumara himself says in the Vachanamrut, how to be held with the body so that we can develop affection for Bhagwan as well as Bhagwan also develop affection for us. So this is all explain in the Yuva Sabha. We should also try our own life to serve Bhagwan and Santo, to do more and more bhajan and also to perform any kind of tap, meaning fast or any vows like Chandrayana or Dharnapana. By saying this, Jai Swaminarayan, Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaj Ganshyam Mahara